Welcome back, everybody, to an exciting episode of Everything Horror Podcast. I am your host tonight, Paul Dosky, with the lovely fiance, Tessa Baker. And we are talking about Wake Dead. If you do not know Wake Dead, well, then you should be fired right now because you should know who. How well, dare you not know what Lake Dead is? Lake Dead <laughs> is a 2007 eight film to die for. Um, Horror f- film. Film, yeah. Yeah, um, horror film. I'm trying to, well, I'm trying to think like a franchise series, whatever it was. Um, so, yeah, we're going to talk about Lake Dead because we got none other than the writer himself, Daniel P. Coughlin, followed by, you may know him at the end of the movie, at the doomed teenager number two, Ryan Coughlin. And then you got the infamous Kane from the film. I already forgot the last name. Oh, Kane Wake or something like that. So, Kane, uh, Trevor can uh, correct me there. But Trevor. Kane Lake. Yes, Kane Wake. Uh, Trevor Torsef, is that, is that how you say your last name? You just nailed it. All right. <laughs> Yay! <laughs> I wanted to make sure, because I was just like, oh, boy. But, yeah, welcome back, Daniel and Ryan, and welcome to the first time, Trevor. <laughs> Yay! Thanks for having yes. us. Thank you. You are welcome. Thanks, um, so, for those of you that may or may not have listen to the dip day episode which you probably did which that was pretty fun as hell a lot of time but um we're gonna do it again anyway uh daniel and ryan you guys can say a little bit about yourself this time if you want or if you want to you can just say nothing and say that the voices inside me have told me that the lawsuit is told me no or uh, and then Trevor, you you can, can always draw straws and decide who goes first. Yeah, you can always draw <laughs> straws, and whoever's got the longest can go. I'm a horrible artist. I can't draw anything. I, <laughs> I think the one with the shortest should go first. All right, I'll, well, go, I'll go. I'll do it. <laughs> pick me. Pick me. <laughs> Did you say it was my turn? Oh my yes. <laughs> I I think. How'd I you don't know. know. It's it's almost shriveling up and going back inside. <laughs> oh jeez, <I'm... laughs> my balls have yet to drop. But I'm <laughs> I'm Daniel P. Coughlin, writer of Lake Dead, Head Blast writing. Ooh. I've also written Farmhouse, Ditch Day Massacre, and a handful of novels, mostly horror. I love the horror. Uh, I live in Southern California with my wife, my dog, my kid, and I got a cat too. I like long walks in the park, the shoving and riddling up my ass. <laughs> Amazing. Oh my god. Sounded that, like a that, true that, creeper right there. That's, that's Amazing. perfect. That's that's beautiful. <laughs> we need to end the episode right now. <laughs> it can't be topped. Oh my gosh. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Ryan. Uh, um, what what do you got, um, buddy? Um, uh, nothing that good. <laughs> I'm Ryan Coughlin. I'm a mild-mannered man and a raging lunatic, all bottled into one little mason jar. Um, also from Watertown, Wisconsin. Uh, and uh, I'm a I'm a writer, and um, I've written uh, a few screenplays on spec, and then one that got produced with Daniel P. Coughlin called Ditch Day Massacre. That's um, completing its its run and um a few books and uh i live in san diego with my wife and two sons and uh try my best to behave that's always a plus that's always a plus <laughs> and finally trevor uh trevor torseth 6'3 250 pounds blue eyes shoulder length wavy hair aquarius <laughs> uh <laughs> I enjoy walks on the beach as well in San Diego, so this didn't work out well. Uh, yeah, no, I'm a, I'm a Midwestern boy like these two guys. I, I think I think everybody's going to detect our accents by the time this is over. Um, I grew up on the uh, border of Canada and Minnesota. I've been in Los Angeles for 17 years. Uh, I live with my girlfriend, Jamie. We've been together for 15 years. We have two dogs and... Uh, yeah, we're right here in the heart of Holly Weird. Well, not really, but Paul Tessa, he is really very he's dreamy. <laughs> that, that wavy hair. <laughs> oh, I've seen I his I've seen his videos. <laughs> <laughs> I've 
seen what he kind of looked like two on one, which is fine. I mean, he got he got that that one. Uh, speaking of which, Trevor, you do that band too. Uh, oh the yeah, Rollaway. I got a band called the Rollaways. Yeah, the Rollaways. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. And um, you did that one video after you had some wine, I think it was. Uh, like she doesn't need you anymore, or something like that. Or, oh my God! Yeah. yeah oh well. my God. <laughs> yeah. Yep. Yeah. You know, Facebook's going to be the death of me. I can tell you that much right now. <laughs> oh, boy. Too much information has, is out there. So uh, I try to uh, try to watch that. But every once in a while, the wine gets to me, and I feel like I have to share it. <laughs> There's nothing that wrong would be with one that. It is. It's a great platform for embarrassment. It really, the face really couple years right is. Ah, so, um, so Trevor, since mm-hmm. you're the only one, I think, because I'm pretty sure we told it to Daniel and Ryan, it's not, and if they don't remember, then we'll tell them again. And anyway, but for uh, you, Trevor, as well, um, so Tessa and I, even though we're very much in the love of the horror genre and stuff, but we actually met in a uh, what do I want to call it? Very weird and interesting horror massacre way. <laughs> putting that, putting it lightly. Um, so the story behind did us, it involve a ball gag? No, no, <laughs> no. <laughs> no, no, not 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 quite, Sorry. not quite that kinky and dark, but <laughs> no. I, uh, Anal beads. <laughs> <laughs> No, no, <laughs> no, but um, stop giving away our secrets. <laughs> stop it, stop it. Okay, anyways, um, so a friend of ours was doing a photo shoot one day and she was trying to do like her own like faces of death thing, and um, I was supposed to be doing that before she moved off to uh Virginia at the time. So, this was also Tetsu's first day. The same day that I was going to be doing the it was my first. Death. It was my first ever photo shoot as a model. And oh. um, so she gets, she does her little thing like with. I do my photo shoot with Allison, who's the photographer. Yeah. And then I come and I hang out with, with Paul. This is my first time ever meeting Paul too. I come and hang out with Paul and Allison and her. Fiance. Her fiance and her dad and a couple other people and uh, Paul. Is, is trying to uh, figure out what to do for his faces of death shoot because he was originally going to get murdered out in the snow with the it with it with the rain washed yeah. it all away. He was supposed to get he was supposed to get murdered with an axe. So couldn't do it outside. Allison's like, well, why don't we do it inside in the bathroom? And then she goes, well, who's who's gonna kill Paul? And I said, I'll do it. Pick me. I will do it. I will murder him. Where True where's love. my Where's my where's my weapon? And Paul's like, well, here's my here's my battle axe. This is the murder weapon. And I'm like, perfect. Yeah, it's like love at first chop. It's the, exactly. Yeah. It, it my uh it, my weapon was like a double bladed Blitted fantasy, fantasy battle axe. axe. Yeah, yeah, battle axe. Yeah, and this thing is pretty big for um a fantasy battle axe. So um I ended up being <clears throat> Paul's murderess. I murdered him in the bathtub with his battle axe. While I was blood, in the bathtub. Blood everywhere. And I I had blood up my arms, blood all over the walls, blood all over Paul, just blood everywhere. <laughs> it it's just to... a it was just a big, beautiful, bloody mess. <laughs> Where can we see these photos? I mean Uh we can send that we can send them to you actually. They are we on our we uh, we have them on our Facebook. Um Paul can also send it to you through a text or through um Facebook Messenger. I actually have our first I like our I mean, first... when Hub's just not getting it done anymore. That's not right. That. <laughs> um, <laughs> so, the, I actually took the first picture of us um, as me being his murderess, and I framed it. And that was, like, the like the first, like, picture that I, like, t- that we had taken together. With the one so, that's pretty so... sweet, huh? Yeah. Yeah. So and so after so after that, um, Paul and I we exchanged Facebook information. We became friends on Facebook, and um, over six months' time, we became we became best friends. We became really close, like thick as thieves, because we had so much in common. And then, um, and then, like 
six months down the road, we decided to meet again and see each other in person after not seeing each other since that faithful day. And, and see what happened from there. Pretty and much. pretty much we realized that we had a lot of chemistry and we were really, really great together. And things just kind of took off from there. And we decided to be the creepy couple and be together. Yep. That's... How long How long's that now? Almost two years. There yep. you go. Congratulations. Thank you. Yeah, we... we got crowned a creepy couple just because of how we first met because every time we tell people that they're just like that's creepy and it's the fact what <laughs> and in november paul november of this year paul proposed last to me year. that last year paul proposed yeah, to me there you go. that's okay. right what good, work, work. good work that's right <laughs> all right <clears throat> let's get the show on the road all right daniel for the uh Let's first fuck. question <laughs> <laughs> first question, buddy. What inspired the writing of Lake Dead? Uh, I think I just I I'm a horror nut like you. I just uh, I I grew up watching Michael Myers and Halloween and Friday the 13th, Last House on the Left, Evil Dead, all that stuff. Dario Argento. So I just wanted to write something. Uh, that paid homage to my favorite 80s slasher stuff. So I wanted to write my own beautiful, handsome people go camping in the woods and get slaughtered by uh, inbred redneck assholes. And <laughs> luckily, you know, I had a blast writing it, and then we had a good time shooting it, and it was just a, a success all around. Uh, and, uh, yes, we – I don't – I don't know if, if the pictures do him justice, but uh, Trevor is like a um, he looks like a, he looks like he plays for the Minnesota Vikings. <laughs> so yeah, you and Christian were were both menacing. So it was neat to have you guys pummeling and beating the shit out of everybody, and it it, it was a great time. Yeah, it speaking was. of which, we had a hard time telling you two apart. Just saying. Yep. We're yeah, like, no, is I, that, that, that him? A, is that him? That was an ongoing kind of deal. I think there was even a crediting issue at one point. Um, somewhere along the line, I think it was crossed, and it was. It, I think it even said at one point that I played Abel. So you're not you're not alone. Well, I I noticed too when we were watching last night. I cut it. Um, we were just like, okay, well, we got a day to watch the film again to refresh my our memory. And one thing I noticed with subtitles on in the end credit is that Kane, the name Kane was spelt two different ways. So I didn't know, <laughs> I didn't know which one was the correct way. So I was just <laughs> like, um, okay, this is interesting. But just a typo, just yeah, a typo. That's what I would you know, would go. Well, not not Dan's typo either. No, I didn't do it. Responsibility. <laughs> I did not. <laughs> All right. Um, well, here you go, Trevor. So how did you like to, how did you get the role of Kane anyway? Well, you know, God, man. through a fucking table. <laughs> there, was a, there was a table. It was you and Jason, right? Yes. I yeah, still, I just... we watched that footage. Everybody was like, yeah, he's our guy. <laughs> That's that's so cool. You know, that was that was basically the first thing I really ever booked. I mean, I think I'd done a couple of, like nothing things, and then and I remember going in that room, and I remember that was at the was it is it the CNN building on Yep, it's top yeah. floor CNN building. Yeah, and I go there a lot because there's a it's either ah uh, there's two buildings that are real similar right there. It's either the CNN building, but Elaine Craig. I do a lot of voiceover work. Or at, and Elaine Craig casting studios there. So I get back there a lot, and my, the memories are always kind of flooding. But I remember getting that appointment and going up there and walking in that room, and it was like a conference room, right, Daniel? Yes. It was, And you guys were sitting on the end of the table, and I was like, well, I guess I better just go for this. And I think, uh, yeah, there was, a, there was something about a cat. <laughs> I mean, I can't remember my lines, let alone yesterday. So I don't know if I'm getting all this right, but I think you guys had me like, stalk and kill a cat or something and i was just you know I, you let it rip <laughs> that's what us goofy actors do man we just pretend you know 
There you go. I think you, you 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 really you you traumatized Jason a little bit. I think. <laughs> it's, 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 he's okay now, right? I hope. Yes. I yes. No. <laughs> I haven't seen that guy in years. He's still you know, short. You. <laughs> you guys working together still? No, no. He's he's uh he he's like a lab technician now. Oh really? Out of yeah, he plays with semen and blood all day. Oh wow. <laughs> Did you get him on the horn? <laughs> yeah, he he's he, he can talk. He, he's a fun guy. We should have had him call in. That be that would have been fun. Yeah, I haven't yeah, talked to him cool. in a while. That would maybe maybe one day we can all just ch- chat. <laughs> and... you, how many times have you guys done this? Is this the second time? Yes. Yep. Second. For yep. for Ryan and I, yeah. Yeah. Well, so wait a second now. So you guys all know it. Do you guys, how did y'all get connected? I'll I'll, I'll start this power. one. <laughs> long. <laughs> well, it's not really that long, but so. Um, I found Ditch Day on Instagram from like a sponsor or something, and I noticed it was on Amazon Prime. Me and Tessa watched it one day, and we're just like, if it's good, do you think we should like message them and see like maybe if they would like to do an interview? And and by the way, Trevor, to put it on the record again, Daniel and Ryan and Megan were our first ever interview by the way oh wow and i think daniel ryan and i think megan i know one of them said something about this was also like their first time doing like a podcast or something like that so it was like it was new for all of us in a way so that kind of helped tone down the oh my god like like can we do this kind of thing like are we ready to do this kind of thing so that's how we all met kind of it was uh, a crescendoing cherry pop that's right yeah pretty much <laughs> pretty much well i'm feeling i'm feeling more confident now now that now that i heard that this is only the second time you guys have done this so or not yes necessarily you and you and tessa but D- yeah dan, dan, dan has really done this one of the time yeah no um, you right now trevor you sound better than both of us <laughs> You do. I sound, sound a very better? distinct. You got a distinct, polished voice, well enunciated. <laughs> I do. I do do this for a living, so hopefully, uh, it'll pay off at some point. Just, just don't say about or Minnesota. <laughs> How many times have I said it? I got, when I listen back, I'll, I'm sure I'll hear it a thousand times. Oh, no, boy. no, no. It's okay. It's okay. So it's okay. Grab a road. So don't don't worry about this it. Fleet. This has really been special now. No, yeah, yeah, yeah. It's been great. So, yeah, anyways. <laughs> <laughs> so Lake Dead. Let's talk about Lake... Are we here to talk about Lake Dead or Lake Death? Because I just thought that there's a Lake Death movie. Has anybody seen it? Yeah, that? total ripoff. It was like they just found the script online and reshot it. Are you and, sure? uh, really? kidding me. Yeah, George, the director, got a hold of me when he found out about that and said, yeah, dude, it's the same concept, like clearly ripped off but uh, i don't know you guys take that as a compliment I, they're, they're standing we're, we're on good the shoulders of great men <laughs> yes <laughs> that's right that's funny i had no i i just saw it because i i googled lake dead and i just saw it that's yeah weird. I, apparently that director that did that wrote and directed it he's he's pretty much notorious for doing that oh wow. his name's his name is creep creeperson correct I don't, are we are we not supposed to be giving shout outs to anybody else while we're doing our if you want to <laughs> if you want to feel I think free they hired christian stokes yeah. oh he was in it, it no no oh. there's, there's a guy that kind of looks like my shirt they sure as hell didn't call me <laughs> fair enough Jeez. anyways fair enough what about farmhouse man i still haven't even seen that oh that turned out fantastic i gotta check that out man i I'm gonna write that down right now. Yeah, Daniel, yeah, thank you was... for your co- uh, for the copy that you sent us. That uh, after I watched it, I was like, I'm pretty sure I've seen this before. I just, I guess it was like, I think it was on Netflix or something. I'm like, I don't it know. Was, it was on Netflix a long time ago. That's and probably where I've it seen off, it. And uh, it would have got a better distribution deal. I think there was some kind of a court case that revolved around the CEO of the company. And I believe I, I think the 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 movie ended up an asset or something. Oh really? Yeah, because I Harvey Weinstein wanted it, Showtime wanted it for an original Showtime original movie, and then After Dark Films wanted it too, and they ended up going with uh, 
Monarch Home Entertainment, which is fine. They, you know, they do good movies, and we we're just happy it came out. But <clears throat> I know that it was uh, supposed to go some other places. But uh, yeah, you remember Mike Carke? Yes. Yeah, I think he's in jail. What? <laughs> yeah. Did he get in a little trouble? He hit 27 years. Whoa. Whoa. Yeah. Whoa. That's no joke. No. <laughs> I always like he, he treated me fair. He gave me my break. It was it was interesting. Matt, you know, you you came out pretty well on that deal too. I mean, that was I mean that was a pretty special thing. And I remember just thinking, wow, this you know. I mean, it's no small feat breaking into this business and making a couple of movies and having your, you know, having someone take your writing and, and not, not to, you know, make two of them. Yeah, that was, dude, we were, we were, uh, I got paid for Lake Dead too. And uh, there was a script, it was going into production when Mike Carke got uh, arrested. Oh, you're kidding. I had no idea. Yeah. You were about to get a phone call. They were, they, uh, they had the DP back. They had George back. They had, uh, they had the script for me. Boom, Boom teenager, teenager number two was was gonna. You actually had a name. <laughs> you were gonna be in there. Oh. Yeah, that, and then it just it 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 couldn't happen. Oh, that's just heartbreaking, man. I mean, that yeah. was my chance to be Mike Myers, Chase Borres. Yeah, dude, they were talking about you know get put uh, ideas together for for part three and four. Oh my god. They wanted to run it out. I think uh, After Dark Films may wait, have been what? too. <laughs> <laughs> oh, are we talking, happened? wait, are we talking like the After Dark now, or are we talking like Dead, that, like the three and four now? Like, is that what? Yeah, there was, they were, they were going to go with a three and four, but it, it fell apart uh, and, bro- and broke my heart. Uh, oh my God, I can uh-huh. only imagine, brother. Oh, oh that's got to be a nightmare. Well, you know, there's still hope. My hair's still my hair's still the same color. I haven't gone gray yet. That's right. I know. I see. I I saw you on American Horror Story. Uh, yeah. I saw that movie. Boom. You shot the the what was the movie you shot in Wisconsin? Oh, it was, uh, I, I was a friend of mine from college wrote that. Kathy Limbo. That's uh, that movie was called No Names. No Names. Yes. And yeah. the, the, the other actor you had in there, uh, uh, I forget his name. James Badge Dale. Yeah, the dude that was in Gremlins. Yeah. Oh. Oh, 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 that, no, that was, uh, you're thinking of a uh, trail of blood. Uh, Tra- trail, yes. Blood. Yes. Trail of blood. Yeah. Bob B- Picardo. Yeah, he was from Wisconsin, too, I think. Is he? I believe yeah, so. Yeah, Robert, I, he, he every, every, I got to call him Bob. I, I made me feel so special. He was such a cool guy. You know, you know, it, it's, you meet all these people that really had the privilege of working with some, it's always the, the guys that have been around for a while, like I always think of uh, my experience with, uh, uh, well, Mark Harmon was so cool on NCIS. You know, these guys, Scott Bakula was my first experience on Chuck. And I remember like, he was so, they were, you know, they're just absolutely, genuinely nice to everybody. And I remember thinking to myself, I wonder if they were always like this, because even when I worked with both Mark and Scott, you know, they they you know been working in TV forever. But I remember thinking, I wonder if they were ever assholes, and you know, learned from those mistakes. You know what I mean? Yeah, maybe. And and but I mean, I, I don't I don't think I, I'm not <laughs> I'm gonna get myself in trouble here. I'm not <laughs> saying that they were ever assholes, <laughs> but like they were just so genuinely nice and so new who everybody was on set and it wasn't fake. It was just Did real. Did you ever anyway. just think of asking them like, Hey, were you ever an <laughs> asshole? <laughs> you know, I, I, they, I don't you know see. Them. I must've been an asshole because I haven't worked with them again. So I haven't, <laughs> <laughs> but maybe, uh, maybe the next time around I'll, I'll think. Good too. old Mark Hart. Dude, summer school was like the, one of my, one of my favorite movies ever. It there was, you go. I mean, come on, it's classic. And that, that, I mean, you and I are the same age, right? What are you, 44 now, 43? Uh, I turned 40 in, oh, in, in, in like done. two weeks. Yeah, so you're I'm older than me. I'm only, I'm only 35. Fair enough. Yeah. Do I look 43? Crap. Yeah. No. God, no. No, no, Fair you enough. do. 
No, you look you like you're in your thirties. I always, I always you kind of look like Brett Favre. Forty is the new eight. There you go. <laughs> there you go. Now you just need to grow that uh, mustache in if you're eight, so that way you can still buy your booze. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> my, my Jameson. Oh God, not touching that for a while. It was a good one last night, huh? Oh yes, American <laughs> Legion. Oh, <laughs> you were a Marine, right? Yeah. Yes. I remember that. Yeah, we had uh, we. It was three Marines at the American Legion last night, and I. Well, I mean, we're we're all about forty, but we're clearly the youngest people in that building. And we just got sloppy drunk in, in, inside of a crowd of elderly people. Have but you it was ever? A, have you ever made it up to that VFW in Hollywood and checked that out? No, but have you heard uh, about that? Yeah, Brad Potts, who's also an actor, told me that I should go check that out. I tell you what, if you come up here and if you do that, would you please call me and take a dance? Yeah, no, like I was going to say, we, we all got to hang out. Ryan, you remember le, le, the last time I, we saw Trevor was at the Cat and Fiddle on Sunset Boulevard. Remember? Yep. yep. I oh, think I we ended up drunk. like wrestling around on the sidewalk at the end of the night. I yeah. do not recall that <laughs> at all. <laughs> I do, because Ryan and I are walking, and all of a sudden, you just, because you're a large person, and you just came up running up behind us and tackled us. (laughs) Oh, my God, good time. You win. You win. (laughs) I doubt it. Don't mess with them Coughlin boys. That's what they say in Wisconsin, I think. That's right. (laughs) They'll they'll, they'll give you AIDS. (laughs) (laughs) Jesus. Oh, fuck. oh man! <laughs> uh, we haven't answered one question. I don't think. Oh my god! No, Paul, yeah. Paul, you sorry, dude. I told you. I so, ADHD. this has your fault, Paul. <laughs> You're supposed to so, be moderating. This. So, so you Ryan. You should be ashamed of yourself. <laughs> so Ryan. I'll edit it out. <laughs> I'll edit it out. <laughs> so Ryan, how did you end up playing as the Doom Teenager Number Two? Oh, there were nine rounds of auditions. <laughs> what? <laughs> <laughs> no, I um, I was like, hey man, my brother wrote this, so you gotta throw me the nepotism bone here, right? And they said, yeah, 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 come on board. No, um, I was uh, I was working hard, uh, trying to bust in uh, as an actor at the time, and um, uh, auditioned a little bit, and they said, cool, we're gonna you're gonna be doomed. And uh, maybe maybe we'll open you up open you up to a sequel. Um, so it was just a matter of uh, you know being being um, you, know, uh, you know understanding the the genre and and enjoying it and liking the movie and you know just having that fun little finish of uh, you know trying to put some some uh, you know blissfully ignorant you know people in there that have no idea what kind of you know endangerment they're about to walk into. And uh, just kind of, you know, being clueless and, you know, being the uh, the likable idiot, and uh, that that's 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 me. Um, so I just I just had to show up and and say a few words and basically be myself and uh, wear an orange sweatshirt. And I was I was in the door. Nice. Brian, you're not a likable idiot. You're a lovable idiot. <laughs> <laughs> lovable. So so even though your role was short, Ryan, how did you like playing as the doomed teenager? Number two. Well, I'm a, I'm a method actor, so for years I walked around as the doomed teenager, and people were like, "What's wrong with you? And why are you still a teenager? And why are you so doomed?" <laughs> I remember <laughs> seeing you constantly for a movie. <laughs> I remember seeing you constantly laying around on set like you were dead. <laughs> This is what I'm about to become. Don't bother me. I'm in, <laughs> I'm in the zone. Uh, Daniel, I, I enjoyed it. Like like I said, it's a, it was a it was it was a privilege to be. You know, anytime you're chosen and selected to be on that side of the camera, it's not easy. You have to you have to you know you have to you have to earn it. You have to prove that you can be there because there's a lot of people in line trying. Um, and uh, you know, I got I got the movie, and I know Dan well, obviously. And uh, what what you know the intent for the movie was, and what kind of you know little little spark plug at the end of the movie was supposed to be, and uh, so it was fun. There you go. And um, Daniel, um, 
you were supposedly a funeral attendee or something? Like, I was watching it, and I'm like, okay, he's supposedly here at the funeral, and it's just like, I don't see him. So. But I saw in the credits you were a funeral attendee, so is that true? Yeah, I was the, I was the good-looking one. With, uh, <laughs> the blue shirt. And, and I, I had, like, uh, <clears throat> like, oh, so stupid, but I had that, uh, the, you remember when people used to, like, what, what do you call it, bleach tips, the... I pointed him out, top. remember? Yeah. I pointed I, him I was, out on I'm the TV. I'm like, look, there he is. And it lo- I look stupid because I'm fingering, like, no, I'm not fingering anybody, but um, <laughs> my fingers are, are are just tapping around like I didn't take my riddle in that day. <laughs> oh, my God. <laughs> but, no, that was fun. It was, I, I enjoyed you know, being a funeral attendee. Amazing. <laughs> Who doesn't? Who doesn't? <laughs> That's great. Oh, oh gosh. Trevor, what was it like for you to play as Kane? Um, I just, you know, the, I, the thing I remember the most, um, I remember we were, it was like, a, it, we, we got into night shoots. And, you know, I think we shot that whole movie in two weeks, less than two weeks. 17 and days, or 15. 17 days, 15, yeah. 15 shooting 15. days. And I think I had seven days on the film, but I remember I was sitting, we that little, remember that little man-made lake? And mm-hmm. uh, I was floating in this boat, and it was, uh, I don't know, probably three, four in the morning, and they're waiting to get this shot, and I'm covered in, you know, that blood. And, and I know that Tessa and Paul, you, I know you guys know what that blood's like. It's sticky, and it's yep. in your hair, and it's everywhere yeah and someone came up and they said you know are you all right and i just remember saying man i am just fine i'm living my dream right now and and i was completely sincere and genuine i had no problem you know you would they you know they were worried about me it's been a long day and it was uh that's what i remember the most is just the pleasure of working and there was a lot of things that i had to do and i remember i remember um I can't think of her name. Oh, Tara? Oh. Who? Tara Gerard? No, it wasn't Kelsey? Tara Gerard. It was, uh, no, it wasn't one of the Kelsey's. It was, her name was Vanessa. Was Vivian? Vanessa. Vanessa. I yes. remember we had to do a scene By where we, we raped her and killed her. Yes. Against that tree. And I remember that being one of the more difficult things I ever had to do, believe it or not. It was just a very strange thing, but she was really talented. And I remember, I remember in the midst of, you know, you know, doing this horrible thing or, you know, and uh, just, I remember being struck by her performance, believe it or not. She was so very a good. Couple, she was very good, I thought. Yeah, I, I agree. I definitely So yeah, those that. are a couple of things that pop into my mind when I think about Lake Dead. And uh, I remember how much I liked uh, uh, um, James, Jim Burns, watching him work. He played the uh, sheriff. Oh, yep. He yeah, he did a good fun. job, too. Yeah, he, Man, he, he did was, a good job. Yeah. He's been around a while. He's done a lot of stuff, too. He is yeah, a Viagra he, guy. <laughs> he had a really good... He wasn't a Viagra commercial, wasn't he? He was. <laughs> he had a mustache. That's right. I, I, I keep waiting for my turn. When am I going to do the hands? <laughs> You're not old enough to do Viagra commercials yet. Yeah, that's right. I'm only, that's right. I'm only 29, right? That's right. I'm 29. Um, yeah. Oh, shock. God, I mean, I could talk, I could, I could talk about Lake Dead forever, but, you know, I, uh, I want to do Lake Dead, too. Let's get on this. I know that would be awesome. There was interest, but then there, uh, there was a legal team that looked into it because the rights should have gone back to me, and apparently they might have, but the lawyers were just—they're like, I, I wouldn't touch it. It just—it it looks it's like it could, it could end up being a mess. Wow! Wow! wow. Oh man! So crazy. Uh, speaking of which, um, speaking of which, Daniel, uh, were there any scenes that you wrote in the movie that had to be actually be cut? From oh, the... yeah. Yeah. We went through about eight drafts. 
And it, it, that script had been optioned by another production company before Alliance, and I, I think uh, total rewrites, I did about 32 on that thing. Oh. But, um, yeah, like, there, wow. originally you guys were talking, you know, and kind of thinking all the heinous things you were doing were funny. And then uh, I, there was a couple characters in there, more, more uh, doomed teenagers and stuff like that. A lot of those got cut out. There's two actually main characters that got cut out. And then other than that, it was like, you know, hey, we're, we're, we're on a budget. So you think instead of burning the, the, the house down, you could just stab him in the face or something? <laughs> so there was that kind of stuff. Right. Uh, yeah. And then uh, what was something big that got cut out? Mostly it was, it was the, the rednecks talking and making jokes about killing people and raping them. They all were, they're always cutting my lines. Right? <laughs> Always cut my lines. <laughs> Maybe that's why they didn't want you to talk at all. Oh, yeah. <laughs> when, when, when you guys killed Vanessa in the original draft, you, you tied her to a tree and you were taking turns throwing hatchets in her face. Wow. What a creepy idea. And then, yeah, you both, you, you ran a train on her headless corpse. Oh, my God. Well, why would so, you? yeah, that, that got cut. I can wow. see why. <laughs> um <laughs> Yeah, that might not. What kind of rating do you get for that kind of uh, behavior? Uh, that, <laughs> exceptional. <laughs> uh, that must be like X rated. <laughs> I would think so. Maybe. <laughs> um, yeah, that's some juicy stuff, I guess. <laughs> um, it's romance. Exactly. It's love at first um, chop, as chop. he said. Yeah. That's right. Love at <laughs> yeah. first chop. First but yeah, that movie was that was the, probably the greatest experience of my life. I, you know, in the in the industry, that was pretty. That was just amazing. the The movie was fun, and I don't know about uh, you guys, but I know I know I can speak for Ryan that we we had a blast. I think we we just hung out on set and talked to everybody, and everybody was just so cool, and it was a fun experience. And it was my first time shooting a movie that I wrote, and it was. It was just a blast, and then watching it on the big screen, that was that was amazeballs for me. Especially yeah, I, I back all that up. I, I, it was a, it was it was a it was a very good experience, very good experience. Yeah, I didn't and... get to go on that boat though. That was that <laughs> yeah, boat. I'm glad that Mike was cold, huh? Now. He never went <laughs> on that boat. Oh, oh, the the rap party. Man, you just had a big boat party with all them beautiful girls, Kelsey and Vanessa and. Uh, I'm not going to say who brought it, but someone brought a, like, a large bag of magic mushrooms. Oh, my God. And there was a point where That's everybody illegal. was in the that water. That is illegal. And, and the boat was running, but nobody was on it. Wow. <laughs> Interesting. Figuratively wow. and literally. <laughs> uh, speaking of having fun, Trevor, uh, yeah. did you enjoy... What was your favorite... What was your favorite kill to that you enjoyed performing? Yeah. Um, God, I got to think about that because <laughs> I don't really know that I got that many kills. I killed Vanessa against the tree and then uh, Jim Devotee, right? Was it Jim? Jim Devotee. Yeah. He, well, you have to got, he got me in the, in the bathroom, right? Yes, he did with the chair. Yes. And he takes a piece out of me and then you don't really know because it it, it it gets a little confusing in there but basically are we allowed to have spoilers here is this a, spoiler alert put your earmuffs on if you don't want the movie to be spoiled but basically it looks like i die there but really i come back at the end and i come around the tree right Yes. See, I knew it was him. I, thought I, I think, knew I, it. I, I don't know if I have sure. it. Yeah, there was. Well, you have to remember. Like too was Rage of Cain. Yeah, the Rage of Cain. But you have to remember that when you're trying to figure out which one of us is which, Christian or 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 myself, just I'm I'm the better looking one. <laughs> I came to the conclusion that how you told them apart. To be honest. <laughs> I was just like, okay, I just definitely gotta be Trevor. And then um, I'm like, I'm like, look at the, I'm like, look at the the statuesque figure here. <laughs> yeah. Well, you know what was the deal? Did Dan? Do you remember? Remember they 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 didn't they didn't make those masks actually. Um, 
they, they weren't actually fitted to our face. I don't know if those masks that we wore, they were latex masks and they glued them on. I don't know that they weren't the Geico caveman masks. <laughs> Maybe. <laughs> I think they might have. They just kind of just stretched them, stretched them on. But yeah, that's funny. Oh, oh Ryan, you were a Geico caveman at, in Florida, weren't you? Yeah, that's shot. So we wore the same mask from the Holy Mammoth. But uh, it was weird for for me. Like they dressed me up in real furs, and then they just spray painted the hell out of my face. But um, I, there there wasn't any there there wasn't a mask. It was just all heavy makeup. Um, and uh, but they had real real furs. That was the did thing. You get, did you get real sick? furs? Did you get sick I after wearing that real fur? No, I didn't oh, because that's that's those those are blankets in my world. Yeah, well, yeah, they they can be that stuff can be really rough. It sits around in those costume houses forever, and it's full of dander. And... Yeah, I didn't get sick. I had, I, you know, I was I was a little stuffy. <laughs> there you go. That's it. <laughs> now you know. Were those masks uncomfortable? I, what mask is I any? I haven't thought twice about it since it since it was. Since I did it, but yeah, I, I think they were, you know, it wasn't, it wasn't really, well, you know what, you know, what was difficult about it is the coming off, coming off, coming off your face because they glued them on. No oh, shit. And so they would have to, you know, yeah. And uh, yeah, yeah, but that yeah, was Brazilian you know, girl. Like a, was I would, the I'd do it again tomorrow. Very cool. I hope that we, uh, it'd be cool to work with you again very soon. Well, well, let's get George Basuto on the line. We let's should. Get this, thing, let's get this thing going. I actually, it's funny because I have, uh, I haven't seen George or remember his friend Jesse. Yeah, Jesse, Cause Jesse was on set the whole time too. He was like the what first AD, something like that. I forgot what he did, and I know he was in charge of the behind the scenes stuff too. Right, and you know those guys are great. I haven't seen him in years, but we kept in contact forever. But I have actually a good friend of mine ended up marrying a, a friend, a, a, a working partner of the two of them. So they're still going, they're still doing stuff and. Yeah. Yes, we're all. I know he that. does all the commercials for like Direct TV or something like that, and I I think he's got something going with like Amy Smart is in it. I don't know something like oh, that. Those guys are doing great, man. Everybody's still everybody's still at it. All I right. love it. All right, Daniel, we got the um. This is unfortunately the last like wake dead question that I had could to to think of. Um. Otherwise, Daniel Ryan, uh, if you guys knew anything more that I didn't add that you guys would like to share after, that's fine with me. Um, so the last question for Lake Dead right now is, what was the idea of the sequel to Lake Dead? But it was never, it was never written or film or never filmed. It was written but never filmed. Um, so it takes place like two years later, and a uh, a church purchases the campground, the property, to turn it into um, a church retreat, and they take a bus full of uh, like naughty church kids up. And Kane has got uh, doomed teenager number two, like, trapped in a cave, like, being held prisoner for some reason. And uh, so Kane kind of takes it out on the, the church retreat. And then Ryan escapes and kind of helps get the church kids off the, the, the dead property, the lake property. Hmm. Yes. This already sounds interesting. This already. needs to. This, this need, need to th happen. This needs to happen. This definitely needs to happen. I would. But like, yeah, I was hoping Kane would be the, you know, go into part, you know, uh, Trevor and or Kane in space, you know, part ten. <laughs> <laughs> Kane take that hat. <laughs> hey, listen, I've got it, an no. iPhone ten. Can we shoot this on an iPhone ten? Yeah. <laughs> Let's do this. <laughs> Turn it into a found footage then. Yeah, there you go. There you what, go. What, what, Paul and Tessa, can you guys play uh, naughty chill, church children? Yeah. I yeah, like it. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, we, we can, can do, do that. that. There were a lot of that. sex scenes in part two. There was, there was a lot more sex <laughs> scenes in part one. That kind of got cut too. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, probably yeah. because we didn't want to make it look like a portal or something. I don't know. That would be the way I would look at it. Here was the one good sex scene in Lake Dead with Alex Quinn and uh, and uh, Malia. Malia. Yes. 
Is I that the one? Is, is that the one, one that's the in the beginning in the bed, or? No. no is that the, the one, one in the that, forest? The one that gets the pickaxe through her face. Oh uh, yeah, that one. <laughs> that was a that was a healthy slaying. <laughs> I believe we saw a bare breast in that scene. Yeah. Uh, oh, there was there was she bore all. Yep. <laughs> She was, a, she was a pretty girl too, or she probably yeah. is a pretty girl still. I haven't, yeah, I think I haven't seen her in years. I saw her in Entourage the last season. She did an episode in there. Oh, from what I, from bigger. what I saw, she's blonde now. Yes. Yeah. Yes, indeed. So, how much editing do you have to do in something like this to uh, make us sound interesting? <laughs> <Make it sound interesting. laughs> um, you guys already sound interesting. You guys are already doing fine. You guys that. are doing great. Just be yourselves. So we let this roll for an hour, and you guys cut this down to what? Three or four minutes? <laughs> no. <laughs> <laughs> the longest interview we've ever had was what? Three. Three hours and twenty minutes. Three hours and twenty minutes. Yeah. Dude, I'm gonna need a pee break then. <laughs> I uh, just take your phone with you. It'll be a good sound effect. Well, you guys have you guys have you guys have uh, cordless phones? Yep. Yeah. yeah. I got a cordless phone. I got a belt around my neck. I'm about to go in the bathroom and do the autoerotic asphyxiation. <laughs> I'm gonna go on the, the wizard. <laughs> oh jeez. Oh man. Wow. Yeah, while so, listening to in excess. <laughs> is, w- was there anything else that we didn't ask you guys that you knew about with Wake Dead that you guys would like to add, or do you think that? Oh, was kinda... you know, um, one of the things I thought was super cool was uh, we saw, we shot it at Sable Ranch, which since burned down in a in a huge fire. Oh no! But um, they shot uh, like they had just shot uh, Devil's Rejects. In the house, so it was the same house as Devil's Rejects. Uh, the motel was the same motel they used for Motel Hell. I don't know oh, if you remember that. I remember yeah, that. and I think four, four of the Friday the Thirteenth movies were shot there. So it was just cool walking around and and knowing, like, oh yeah, this is where this. It's notorious for having sh- horror movies shot there. So that was just really cool. That is, yeah. That's why I didn't um, know that it had burned down. Yeah, yeah. Whole, the whole place, it burnt to the ground. Oh, oh my God. Heartbreaking. It is. Yeah. Hope that lake's still there. <laughs> that <laughs> handmade man. Boiled. <laughs> that lake was pretty funny. I remember, like, you could even see actually in the film at some point that it was, because there was, it was like, a, it, it was, it was concrete, right? I think so. With, like, yeah. moss all around it or something. Yeah. Yeah. Oh man, go back there tonight if we could shoot it. Hell yeah, good times. It's always good times. Oh, I got something. How did you guys come up with the idea to put? Oh God, what was her name? Was it Tara? In, in the, the beginning. In the lake, yeah. Like that. That kill in the room. Wow. Oh, that yeah, was, that was fun. That that was pretty interesting. I'm that sitting was there. Sam, yeah. Yeah, Sam. I was sitting there and I was like, whoa. And then yeah, they, that was interesting. Yeah, and then they put her in the boat and took her out and cement blocked her feet and oh, whoop, right. in and the lake. Well, they first tied the legs yeah, down. Yeah, I mean, take they the taped leg the legs down. down and put the spike through her ankles. Yep. Yeah, and, and then put the it through. and yep. hammered it through and then put the metal pipe through the metal pipe thing through That's to like right. chain her feet yeah, so yeah, she would it. like. We didn't use makeup for that. We actually did that. You did, didn't you? <laughs> yeah. Are you are you say are you stating this on the record? <laughs> yeah, there's another cannibal still there. on the podcast. No one's seen <laughs> Tara since. No. Uh, and, and it's not that deep of a lake, just nobody's looked. You know, wasn't there a, wasn't there a, Dan, wasn't there a really good shot of that of her like floating from underneath her? I think so. They tried to go for the jaw, the homage to Jaws kind of shot. Right. I there was some reason that they couldn't use it. I forgot oh. what happened. I thought, that was amazing. I remember, and I never said that was early on, and then we never saw it again. 
But that was yeah. such a cool shot. I, you don't know why. I don't. I remember that was like a topic of discussion, though, because they really wanted to use it, and there was, there was a reason that it, it couldn't be used. And I want to say that part of it had to be was was something about the 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 um the technical aspects of the footage because that was shot on digital, whereas the whole movie was shot on thirty five millimeter film. And I don't know all how that works out, but I do believe it had something to do with just the format it was shot on. Wow, that's <laughs> right. We shot that thing on thirty five. Yeah. You yeah, we, the last we got to do that. that. Was ever shot on 35? They shot Farmhouse on 35 as well, so that was okay. that was cool. And I remember it was uh, they shot on 35. You know, you know, a fun fact: Mario Lopez was was about to sign the contract to have Jim Devote's role, and <laughs> so he was going to be in it. And then George wanted George said, you know it's almost the exact cost to shoot on film. So let's, why can't we get somebody else? We don't need Mario Lopez to sell this movie. And he, he pitched it and got it. And so instead of shooting on digital, we got 35 millimeter, but we, we had to do away with Mario Lopez, Lopez. but wow. Jim Devote rocked it. He was, yes, he was he good. Yes, he did. Well, I know they had that scene when um, Tara was underwater where I thought it was pretty neat where, um, uh, What's his face? Was it Alex that had to uh, go down to get his wallet, even though the lake was burning his eyes? I thought that scene when he was coming down into the water to look for the wallet, and Samantha yes. like, right there in front of him, and it's just like, like how do you not feel <laughs> or something? Yes. Like it's just like, oh man, that was a really good, good camera um, angle as well. That was fun. That yeah, I just thought it would be creepy, you know. They're, the DP they're on the movie was solid too. We had Curtis Peterson in charge of yes. that. Yes, <laughs> he's done a ton of stuff. He did. Uh, uh, he he did the first Rambo movie, First Blood. Huh. Yeah, if you IMDb him, I think he's done like two hundred movies or so. That's we're talking about the DP. Crazy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, he, he did everything. Death Wish Part Five. Yeah, yeah. yeah. He'd been just I, cause I, I talked to him. He'd just been up in Canada shooting something big too. I think before Lake Dead. Yeah, he had he had offices in Canada and LA. Right. I want to say maybe he was Canadian or something like that. Maybe. <laughs> yeah. He's a good he's a good Canuck. <laughs> They're all good Canucks. They are. Dan Woods is awesome too. That, are you still working with Dan? Dan, no, or... I, I don't, but um, I we still keep in contact, and uh, no, he's he's uh, unfortunately his his wife uh, just recently passed from cancer, oh. and he's been taking care of her, and uh, the, he's back up in Canada. He's still he's he's doing another show, I do believe, but yeah, he's a uh, awesome, awesome guy. I worked for him for I think 13, 14 years. I have nothing bad to say about him. He was he was awesome. Yeah, he was pretty cool on set. He was he was the uh, the principal. Yeah. On the TV show Degrassi Junior High. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Which is you know I mean I don't know if everybody realizes but that I kind of I kind of am the only Canadian I think that missed the whole Degrassi. I mean every Canadian. Are you Canadian too? Yeah. Well, I grew up. Yeah, on the border. So my mom's Canadian. My dad's from Min my dad is from Minnesota. So I'm dual citizen, and so oh, it was easy cool. for me to come. Yeah, but I have yeah, kind of a two passport situation there. Yeah, we have another nice. Ryan. And I have a friend Jamie Roy that has that too. He goes That's up to it. Canada for for surgery or something. Something about oh, the health system. Oh, <laughs> does he? Yeah, I, I've never. Does he gets that, both. I, yeah, I you, you probably do too. You have to live for a certain amount of time in Canada to be able to qualify. I think it's like six months or seven months, maybe. Hmm. So, uh, yeah, anyways. All right. Um, Ryan, uh, you, I know you just said you publish books and stuff. So what what have you done for book-wise? And what book that you have uh, published do you think is your best work? I, you know, I, the last one that came out was called Right Handed Lefty. And, um, you like to think you get better as you write more. Um, 
so I would I would have to say right handed lefty is the best book. Um and that that's not written under a pen name. That's more of a coming of age kind of, you know, a la stand by me, um, outsiders kind of feel. Um and uh, you know, it's set in Wisconsin, so there's a lot of aspects that are near and dear to my heart. Um and uh and then um but the first novel I had come out was called The Landlord and I'm um, actually working on that screenplay adaption right now. Oh um, wow. Yeah. And uh, I think it's going to end up pretty good. But uh, that, that was the, the book was written under a pen name because I do a pen name for everything that's horror or dark tales and then um, have, you know, some like young adult stuff that's under Ryan Coughlin. Um, and then I uh, recently published a short under William Press called Off the Rails. And it's short, but I love it. Like I, and it, I agree. Uh, I, 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 I liked it. it. You did? Okay, yeah, good. I did. Um, so it really doesn't matter what I think about it. You know, you, you, our, our work is interpreted and enjoyed by people, so it only matters what people think, really. Um, and uh, working on working on another another book, um, another William Press novel called Haunting Me. I'm trying to get it done maybe in the next year or something like that. Um, but, well, uh, you know, you just got to keep going. Um, you'll see my name on one of the purchases one day. Cool. Yeah, it'll be out there. But, um, yeah, I would, I would go with right-handed lefty. Um, just because of, you know, I, w- everything I put into it and, um, it's close, but, um, yeah. you just, you, you move on and you, you learn lessons and try to get better. I agree. Your short story, uh, through the eyes of a deceased conductor was fun too. Nightmare. That's, that's, that's what was off the rails. It was, it was renamed. Oh yeah. Yes, yes, yes. <laughs> I, I gotta say, I, I really like that, the title right-handed lefty that. That popped out as soon as you said that. I was like, what a cool concept. Does yeah. Play into oh, the, the concept is definitely good. Yeah. Check it out. I'll, I'll check it out, brother. I will check it out. I actually wrote a song called uh, Off the Rails. It ended up, it didn't make my album, but uh, uh, it ended up being called Hellbound to Do. Hellbound to Do. Hellbound nice. to Do. There's, there's a little, a lot of Off the Rails references in that. That's awesome. Yeah. Daniel, you've also published some books as well, which you um, gave me a couple when you sent back the Wake Dead that you guys signed for us. And I'm trying to remember one is the Ted score one. And I'm trying to remember what the other one was. I can't even see my books right now. So I don't I think it's called Craven's Red. Yes. 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 And I just finished my new book. Uh, satanic panic. <laughs> oh. <laughs> and what can you say is going on in this book there? It's about three best friends. One of them is a female. And they've been uh, friends, grew up in a small town for life. And then now they're off in college at the University of Wisconsin, Oshkosh. And uh, they want... You know, they want to experiment sexually with a threesome. So it starts there. It starts with uh, an innocent sexual experience that uh, spirals into deviance. All the while, they pop up on the radar of a satanic cult. Hmm. So it's it's pretty intense. Uh, I might change the title, but I like Satanic Panic for right now. Yeah, I like that one. Yeah. Yeah. I like it. I like it. Um, it's just, uh, you know, when you think about how things go wrong, it usually starts out with something fairly innocent. Just a little, you know, almost like uh, like addiction starts with a with one little line of coke and spirals into, you know, hell. Yes. Where, you know, you hit rock bottom. So it's I like how of, your uh, gateway is cocaine. <laughs> fair, fair enough. Yeah, cocaine, you know, the gateway truck. Start at the, start at the top, baby. <laughs> oh, jeez. <laughs> no. But I, for the record, I do not have a cocaine problem that you know of. <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh nice. man. Um, so, Trevor, you just mentioned about your album as well. Um, you... Trevor, you create you create music in your free time during uh, 
during the free time in your life, what kind of music and where can we find your tunes? Well, my stuff is, uh, yeah, well, I, you know, I've been out here trying to be an actor. I mean, I, I graduated from my acting program in 98 and went to Minneapolis and I, and I was there for three years before I came out. So I've been working as a professional actor for 20 years and it's, you know, it's not easy. And, uh, but the whole time I've been doing that, you know, my grandma bought me a guitar when I was a younger man and, uh, I've been writing these songs for years and years and years and years. And as a matter of fact, in my college theater program, two of my really close friends in college were pretty I consider gifted songwriters and we kind of all just bounced these songs around pardon me not two three of uh, my friends so we you know music was always kind of part of everything we did if we were drinking we were writing songs and making each other laugh, cutting each other up and and then uh, you know I kept going with it my other buddy Joe Robinson he's got a really great band called Pacific Radio he kept going with it he's got an album out and I you know I as an actor I think the one thing that I would impress on anybody that you know looking to get into the business it can be pretty lonely you know it's uh, a lot of the roles that I play are you know supporting roles and they're moving someone else's story forward and I'm fine with that but within that it, you, you could be kind of confined creativity so I kind of just sat back I don't know about three years ago and said I've got to do something for myself so I made this record and uh, it was a long process because I made a record and you know it 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 sounded great it just wasn't my thing I couldn't uh, I couldn't relate to it so I ended up kind of shelving that and uh, got all the musicians together that played on it and we just kind of sat down in a room and made this you know a real band album and you know it's just four guys sitting around playing and uh it's available now I actually had vinyl printed so i've got uh, a bunch of records here and i have to i've got a web, uh, website the rollaways.com you can check that out and uh you can't actually purchase the albums yet because i i'm a little bit of a ludite and i'm trying to figure, <laughs> figure out how to uh get all this computer stuff going but you, it's it's there rollaways.com and i would say in the next week you'll be able to purchase the uh record there and it's I, to answer your question i think you said what kind of style of music it's uh americana country but it's really 70s it, it sounds it sounds like the record could have been made in the 70s i've got an affinity for when i was born i like the 70s oh, very yeah. nice i like yeah it. great so rock and roll came that. out in the uh 70s I, I I believe so. Hell yeah. Yes. Hell I'll yeah. check that out, dude. I can't wait. Yeah, please do. And you know what, man? I, I'm going to check out all these books. I wrote, I took notes. I got them all written down here. Oh, yes. Look, I, like, I, I like the working title for Satanic Panic. It grabbed me right off the bat. Just okay. almost the same like as that. right-handed lefty did. Yeah, see, cool. you're doing a good job. <laughs> I, I, I might have to steal that, Ryan, actually, and <laughs> write a song called right-handed lefty. You have my permission. That is, that's, I like that. I don't know oh, how I'm gonna yes. make Satanic Panic work, but I'll probably steal that too. That's do it, like speed do. metal song. Satanic <laughs> 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 Panic. Oh, I man. see a song about a, a, a deranged clown at <clears throat> Chuck E. Cheese. There you go. Initiating you go. A, a food fight. <laughs> <laughs> oh boy. I'm but hey, look, I forgot. I gotta plug my uh, yeah. If you go to www.danielpcoughlin.com, you'll check out all my work, and it's available at BarnesandNoble.com, Amazon.com, some bookstores. I don't know where, but buy my stuff. <laughs> <laughs> buy my record. You buy my record. There you go. Support or these I'll assholes. Take a piss I mean, take Easter a basket. To support the uh, gentlemen, even though they can be uh, quite, quite um, persuasive with their words, I guess. <laughs> Manipulative. The, po the power of That's persuasion. Right. That's right. Okay, um, Brian and Daniel, so this is for you guys. Um, just because I figured since you guys are going to be back, it would be nice to maybe see what's going on with it as well. So your next question involved... Ditch Day. Ryan and Daniel, any plans to move Ditch Day forward 
like come back with a sequel? We wrote a sequel. Um, there's talk. There's some things that we're not allowed to talk about right now. That's so fine. hopefully. <laughs> so there hopefully is hope. Is, is, <laughs> there is hope. Yay. Hope. That's good. I'm glad to hear that. Because um, yes. I also know, um, I don't know if there's anything you can say about this either, but it, it, is there any plans for this day for like DVDs or anything? Or It's just... not on DVD. In fact, I, uh, the, I just, I, there's cop, there, you can buy used copies on Amazon, but uh, some, there's some kind of old fashioned or old school distribution deal where it's it's gone it, it's in brick and mortar video stores for rentals but uh there's a certain period of time where it can only be sold to brick and mortar uh rental stores so hmm. it's weird you have to find a a used copy like, then or something yeah yeah a used copy but yeah they're out there okay it is hmm. on dvd it's uh and they cha- the distributor changed the title to just ditch days it's okay. not Ditch Day Massacre in for the U.S. DVD. Right. Yeah, I remember yeah. that. Yeah, the overseas had the Ditch Day Massacre. U.S. had just regular Ditch Day or something yeah. like that. Yeah, and then uh, Germany, everywhere else calls it Ditch Day Massacre. Awesome. All right, we're kind of swaying through the questions now. So what? So this is for everybody. I don't care who if you guys want to pull for straws again. But uh the next question is, what are you guys excited for in 2018? Is there anything that you guys are looking forward to? Um, anything, really? Is there anything that kind of... Ryan like and I wrote another script. I'd like script. to win the lottery. <laughs> that would be cool. That'd I think cool. that would be cool. <laughs> First time for everything, I guess, right? Yeah, I'll, t- I'll, I'll tell you what. If I win, I'll fly us all to Italy. We'll do this, uh, we'll do this in Florence. We'll do our next interview there. There nice. Go. They got good red wine over there. Yeah. <laughs> um, I got red wine here. Full circle. Full circle. <laughs> That's right. I actually <laughs> just found some um, some Halloween wine type stuff like a while ago, so I need to get me more of that stuff. <laughs> <laughs> it's what very delicious. <laughs> you know I like you? that Francis Ford Coppola, uh, the Coppola wine. Yeah, that's pretty oh, good. He likes, yeah, it's not bad. Good. They're all good. Yeah, they are. Yeah, you... I, 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 I just don't do the Boone's Farm anymore. I've moved past Boone's Farm and uh, what about Mad Dog 2020? Yes. Oh, God, God. Yeah, you remember we were... the green one? I think it was Sour Apple. Sour the flavors. Apple. Yeah, the flavors of Mad Dog 2020 were, were the same as like Ubba Bubba. Yeah. <laughs> or Dolly oh. Ranchers. Yes. Oh, God, that stuff was awful. That okay, always you're, sound... you're, you'll have a bleeding ulcer before you get to the bottom of the bottle. <laughs> oh, geez. Yeah, you can only drink that when you're young and your body's not quite dead yet. Yeah. <laughs> Mad Dog 2020, Boone's Farm, and Mickey's. Yeah. Oh, <laughs> oh. classics. Oh. Well, you guys are around, I forget what uh, town it's in in California, but it's called the Vampire Wine. The you what? Vampire Wine. It's around your area in California. Huh. Okay, yeah, probably Temecula. Yeah, well, I must say I'm a big fan of their wine. I usually used to order from them and stuff a long time ago. And then at some point in time, they decided that they weren't going to allow their wine to be shipped to my state anymore. So I'm like, what? And then they ended up... <laughs> going through some other change or something and now I can re-get my vampire wine, thank God, but they completely like, took out all the old deals that I used to like. So. That's yeah. just rude. And, For shame. I, here's the it thing I right. just don't it get. Right. Well, here's the thing I, that I didn't get. I uh, emailed them and I was just like, hey, um, can you tell me why for some reason your wine can't be shipped to Vermont? You know what their response was? They sent me a hat. <laughs> I don't know what that's supposed to tell me, but I, yeah, they sent me a hat, not once but twice. I'm gonna, I'm gonna get you a t-shirt. The t-shirt's gonna say, <laughs> uh, "I can't get my wine. In, in, I can't get your wine in my state, and all I got was a stupid 
to have. <laughs> <laughs> I got to go back to the drawing board on that joke. <laughs> I asked for wine and instead I got a hat. Yeah. There you go. There you go. Yeah. Um, and he, so, um, have you guys ever thought of an t- attending a horror festival? Oh, yeah. I went to uh, New York City. Uh, horror film festival this year. That was awesome. Is that where Ted Score got nominated yeah, the or won? It was nominated. Yeah. Nice. I won a couple of film festivals with that screenplay. That's awesome. Yeah, I remember you posting that up, and I was just like, oh, good for you. I was just like, I still yeah. have yet to read the book itself, though, because I've just been darn busy with other stuff, and just like, one of these days, I'm going to get to it. <laughs> Fair enough. Dan, what, what, I would appreciate it, buddy. Was- we went to a few times. Uh, oh, Fangoria? Fangoria? Fangoria, yeah. yeah. Fangoria, Fangoria is coming back. Thank God. Yeah, yeah they put on an awesome uh, film fest slash uh, horror weekend in L.A., which is just amazeballs. I was more excited when I heard they were coming back in print form. I was just like, finally. Oh, yes, the magazine. Yes, the magazine. It's one of the greatest magazines ever. Hell yes. <laughs> Horror Hound is pretty good, too. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I don't know. I, I love Horror Hound because I can look at all the... They, they have that thing for putting all the old DVD covers for all the cool horror movies. Oh, that's cool. Yeah, okay. I get... I like I, the old artwork. I get that I like Fangoria more because I've heard, that's how I heard about some of the um, weirdest films I've ever seen or own now. Like, example, have you guys ever heard of the French film called Martyrs? Yes. Oh, my Who God. Yeah. I think um, <laughs> the, the American version came out. It's not It's not. It's we not don't, bad. But we, don't, we don't even talk about the U.S. version. No. <laughs> I I watched that. I watched that, and I said, "This is like a disgrace." (laughs) Like, yeah, that was pretty killer. That and insides. Yes, that was also a really good one. What can we expect from you guys in the future? And this is the last question, by the way. (laughs) The lucky, the lucky thirteen. The lucky thirteen. A lot. We're never-ending, you know, storytellers. And, um, you know, uh, Dan is by far the most prolific as far as, you know, just uh, being a content machine. But, um, you know, just you know, I can speak for myself here. And I know Dan and, and Trevor uh, we love what we do. And we, we have more fun second per second doing these things that we're passionate about um, than, than anything else. And, uh, you know, each one of these products on the shelf gives you a little bit more momentum for the momentum for the next one. And, uh, you know, just love coming up with good stuff that, that uh, you know, strikes a chord with people. And, um, you know, the, the, the stories are, you know, are, are boiling. There's a bunch of stuff that's in the hopper right now. And, uh, you know, there will be a lot of content, both movies and, and books and who knows what else. Music for Trevor. Then no, there's no quitting us, it looks like. Looks like we're Hell all no. at it. Oh, Trevor, we, we're, Ryan and I wrote a script called The Sickening. That's, uh, it's, it's, it's probably going to happen in, in, in the next year or so. We oh, should wow. work on that together. It oh, would be I'd, fun. It's oh, a I'd vigilante it. revenge flick. Oh, very cool. You know, I, I would, you guys, you guys got to keep me in mind. And I, you know, I, I, th- I feel that we've all kind of kept each other, you know, in each other's minds. And, and that it's, it's great to hear that you guys are still thinking about me. And I would definitely, you know, you guys, do you guys ever like get like need to get actors together and just like read some of your scripts out just so you can hear them? Give me a call, man. I can get I can get stuff together in a heartbeat. I would totally do that. I could use uh, 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 that's like one of the best ways to do a revision. Oh, is to have a bunch of actors go through a reading so you can just kind of hear it out loud as opposed to in your head. Exactly. Just give me a call, man. I'll get that together. As a matter of fact, I'm working on this thing right now. I'm actually really, I should have mentioned it. I, I'm really excited about this. It's a film called Cannonball. I'm shooting with uh, 
uh, an actress by the name of Scotty Thompson. She's done a bunch of work, super, super beautiful woman. And, and she went to school with this filmmaker named Sean Fredericks. And I'd never met him before. He contacted me out of the blue to play this hit man in this film. So I'm going to be doing that. And that's uh, that'll be something to look forward on the film festival circuit in the next year. But I, I, I you know. Doing something like playing a vigilante, like you said, or a hitman. I'm going to go back and watch Death Wish right now, actually. And then what was the... Uh, go ahead. The new one or the old one? I want to watch the old one, but I, you know, I'll probably check out the new one, too. It was badass. I liked it. Did you like it? I did. Bruce Willis rocked that shit. <laughs> what? Come on. Bruce Willis rocks everything. I he does. Bruce Willis, dude. That guy's a very good actor, and he, I <laughs> kind of agree. He does rock everything he does. Was yes, there another and, uh, Hitman movie called The Machinist or something like that? The there Mechanist. was a Christian Bale movie, but it wasn't a Hitman. He wasn't. Or a... no, yeah, Jason Statham. No. Right? The, no, that was the mechanic. That was the mechanic. Is there another one called? Was there a the Charles Mach- Bronson movie that where he was a Hitman? Probably, but I don't. I don't remember what it was you called. Anyway, well, he played the same role in every this, single but... movie, and it was great every time. <laughs> Yeah. Oh, man. Well, man, this is, I, I got to say, you know, this has been great. And, I, you know, I get down, Dan, where, you, are you, are you, you're in Orange County still? Yeah, I still, I love it down here, dude. Well, Ryan, you're in San Diego. Yeah. Hey, tr- I'll come up there and see you just, just to hang out and, you know, because we had a good connection. I would love that. I would love that, man. Drink a beer, I would love that. Whatever. Love and you're always welcome down here. I live in Rancho, Santa Margarita. Okay. And, okay. Uh, yeah, we just bought a pretty chill house. We love it. My backyard is uh, the ultimate man cave kind of thing. All right, I can get into that. Yeah, I got a grilling island, a bar, refrigerator, a fire pit, a hot tub. We oh, chill. Damn. <laughs> got a sold. TV with sold. stuff out there. <laughs> well, I get down to San Diego quite a bit too because I'm, you know, I'm a huge baseball fan. So Petco Park is about the yeah. Best. Let's let's link up. Let's be yeah. Sure. Are you well, a you Padres know, fan? Well, no, I'm not a Padres. Oh, I, I, yeah, I'm a, I grew up a Twins fan, but I also like the uh, the Expos, so I follow the Nationals because the Expos oh, moved cool. to Washington. So yeah, I mean, I just love baseball. So, but Petco Park is the best place in the world to go watch it. I mean, you know, I don't know if I love baseball or hot dogs and beer more, but they do go hand in hand. They do. We should we should all go to a baseball game. That'd be cool, a cool Let's, meetup spot. Let's do that. We'll get on the east coast. We'll, we'll have Paul and uh, and you guys can take us out to uh, Tessa can take us out to a, a east coast ball game. That'd be cool. Yeah. All right. The only east coast ball game you will be going to is either New York or Massachusetts. Well, we can do either. Okay. <laughs> we'll go to either one. Actually, I, I just had a friend move because his girlfriend got a job at Harvard, so we're gonna probably go see a Red Sox game this year. So oh, no, there you go. We'll, we'll be out there maybe. Yeah, well, uh, Fenway Park is pretty awesome. Yeah, I haven't been, but I hear Stephen King has season tickets. He, he sits right behind the the home plate. Are you connected with him at all in the course of your career? I wish. No, yeah. I, I used to work for Wes Craven, which was awesome. I remember that. Oh my god! Oh wow! Rest in peace, yeah, he Wes was, Craven. He was awesome. I remember that. Yeah. Oh man! I would walk into his office pretty much every day and be like, "Hey, you mind signing this?" So I have I have autographed everything by Wes Craven. I'm kind of annoyed. I'm about. jelly, so jelly. Yeah, so that was a bit lost, but yeah, way cool dude. Yeah, I, I've heard he was a really nice dude, and he just I get from Whoa. what I understood, he really like everything appreciated and like loved his fans and stuff. Is what I even heard. So he did, he did. He signed everything. He he gave a lot to charity. Just. Nice to everybody too. You just you could you couldn't meet a nicer person. Oh man, what what is the guy's name from People Under the Stairs that is gonna be at the Scarecon that you and uh, that me and Tessa are going to this year? Oh my god. People, what? uh, which the Vin Ving Rames or or uh oh the the dude that the the crazy the bad guy. guy the cra- yeah, yeah um, the crazy guy. He was the priest in in Silver Bullet, the werewolf. Movie. Yep. Yep. Uh, I can't think of his name. On top. Gonna... He was in uh, Heartbreak Ridge with Clint Eastwood. All right, hang on. I'm gonna I'm gonna answer this question like right 
now. Sean Whalen, I think. Whalen? I think that's how Okay, he... yes. Yeah. Yeah. He's in a couple movies that I've seen, like uh, Way to Rest and People Under the Stairs. People Under the Stairs is, is – I love that movie. It's very underrated. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah, me and uh, Tessa and I are going to be – I'm going to be taking Tessa to a Scarecon this year, two days after her birthday. We're going to be meeting uh, quite a lot of people, and they still got – Doug Bradley. Yep. Doug Bradley's one of Elvira. them. Elvira. Pinhead. Yep. <laughs> We're going to be meeting Elvira. We'll be meeting uh, Felissa Rose. She's known for, like, uh, Satan's Playground, um, Sweep Away Camp, The Silent... Oh, okay. Yeah, the Silent, the Silent Night, Zombie Night, and The Perfect House. Uh, we also got Jason Lively, who is known for Night of the Creeps. Uh, Ghost oh, Jason, did he... Was Jason Lively, uh, he was the red-headed dude? Uh, the one with the shotgun? Yeah, oh, No. Oh, um, okay. I know. I know who you're talking about. Also, he's in, uh, he's in tons of stuff. Also, Tom Savini. Yep, Tom, Tom Savini. He's a legend. Oh yeah. yes. Yeah, he recently <laughs> just got announced that he'll be there. Um, Rick Dean Logan, who is um one of the um victims in um Nightmare on Elm Street. He's uh, also known as uh one of the characters Freddy's in Buffy dead. the Vampire Slayer and Back to the Future Two and Three. That's cool. Yeah, yeah so it's pretty we good got a lineup. Lot of, we'll even be meeting one of Jason Voorhees' victims, uh, Amy Steele from Part Two. <laughs> oh, very cool! Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah that's going to be taking place in, um, in June in Massachusetts. So that's why I was saying if you guys ever were ever interested in doing like uh, horror fest, that you guys should wink, wink, see if you can get invited. Wink, wink. <laughs> I will wink that wink. I'm gonna, I'm gonna start waking right now. <laughs> I'm still waiting for that. Yeah, I want to get on that payola when I do start doing the Cane Lake circuit. So, why don't you guys, you know, get your books famous, and so everybody goes back and backlogs. And... I'm working on it. We got a Lake working. Dead reawakening. There you go. I like okay. it. All right. The rage of Cane. The rage, the rage of Cane. Of Cain. <laughs> that would actually be pretty good. Couple more years, it ain't gonna be much of a rage. It's gonna be an old man walking around with a walker in the forest. <laughs> that. Uh, but a wise he's still one. going for that revenge. He's going. He's still going for that revenge. He's been planning That's this right. all his life, getting back That's at right. him. <laughs> That's right. There's victims to be had. Exactly. <laughs> the amnesia of Cain. <laughs> there you go. Um, yeah. So I think that about wraps up this. Uh, interview thing. Um, I want to thank you guys for uh, hanging out with us. Trevor, welcome, welcome to the first time. Like I said before, to the horror couple of us, um, and Daniel Ryan. It's always a uh, pleasure to have you both. Um, it was always, it's always fun to talk with you guys, especially poking the voices inside each and everybody's heads. Mainly, Dan. Yeah, we definitely like to converse with the voices inside your heads. Um, hey, you guys are pretty awesome too, and and thanks for the opportunity. It's pretty, I love your show, and it's it's just awesome to be a guest. And well, thank you. you. Well, we, and we appreciate you guys being a guest as well, because you guys are awesome people too. Yeah, you got you know, guys, thanks thanks so much for including me. I you know I, I I hope I didn't step on too many step on too many lions, but uh, no, I had a great time. <laughs> I'm glad. We're glad you good, had a good time. Fun. Yeah, it was. And um, I'm glad you guys could actually catch up, too, because, I mean, I know we, me and Tessa kind of were listening to you guys ramble on, but, I mean... It, it, it's just really great. It was real good that you guys were catching up and stuff. I didn't want to intrude, so that's why I was just like, okay, I'll just let them talk. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, I didn't want to be like that asshole and be like, hey, guys, I don't... I mean, <laughs> blah, blah, blah. I mean, I, I'm not that... that type of we appreciate that i need to be what? reeled in sometimes i i don't know how i land on topics yeah i i yeah I, uh, I'm, I'm crazy it's just like every other actor um aren't we all crazy somehow but we're gonna survive somehow <laughs> well we got we got dates for baseball games and uh horror fest so uh, I'll, I'll look forward to seeing you all soon and exactly. yeah, yeah. Hey, we'll, I'll, I'll, I'll get up there in the next couple weeks or next couple months trevor 
just just give me a shout, man. I I I don't know if you still have my number. You probably do. I, still, never, I do. Never have, I have your number. Yeah. As long changed. as it hasn't changed. Yeah. <laughs> I'll send I'll send you a text when we're it, done here, so I can. It was confirm. it was a really good year. It was a great year. You'll know it. So. Um, yeah. Yeah. Send me a text. Yeah, and let us know what you think of the the pictures that I sent you, Trevor. Oh, thank you so much, Tess. I I, I will. I look forward to getting them. I'll, I'll find a special place for them. <laughs> Oh, and you yeah, guys, no, I mean, this, this is great. I really appreciate all this. So. No, it's, it, it, well, I forget who it was. Oh, it was another guy that we interviewed. His name is Jed Bryan. He was the writer and director of a film called Unwisted Owner. And after we got done with the interview, we're like, he was telling me, like, I'm not used to this. And he's like, what do you mean? He's like, we're still talking even after the interview. And I'm like, what do you mean? He's like, oh, I usually just like do a phone interview and then that's it. And then they hang up. And yeah. I'm like, oh, what assholes. <laughs> and he and he liked and he liked our picture too. He thought it was really awesome how we met and everything. And I think he gave you the whole spiel too, like like Mike Bill O'Burst. Jr. Did. Yeah, oh you should tell God. you should tell them about what Bill O'Burst Jr. Oh. said to you. <laughs> Well, first of all, Daniel and Ryan, uh, so we ended up getting in contact with Bill, and we actually did an interview with him, and we told the story that we told you guys before, and now Trevor, about how me and Tesla met, and I shit you not, Bill goes, Paul, Paul, I'm going to tell you this right now. It's, you're it, you're, you're in your 30s. You're in your 30s. Just this go is outside. the time. This is the time for. This is like the time in everybody's life where they have like a midlife crisis. Do not screw up your relationship. Go out and buy a motorcycle. But I repeat, do not <laughs> screw up your relationship with Tessa. And then he goes, and if you. This is good advice. Good advice. <laughs> and then he goes, um, if you do screw up, I'll be down. He'll be he'll be coming after me with the uh, fireman's axe. He's like, he I'll be coming to Vermont, Paul, with my fireman's axe. From and this day. Hey, I he can't. I got that axe hanging up in my garage. Well then, he's lying. Well then, maybe. No, he'll come maybe, with another you know, one. He'll come he, with he, he probably, we had three of them. <laughs> oh hey, yeah. He's, he's he's he just got cast. He's uh, starring in Rob Zombie's sequel to uh, Devil's Rejects. What? Really? He's filming it right now. Yeah, he's starring in it. And it's called Three from Hell. I did hear yeah. that it's called Three from Hell. I did not hear that Bill was uh, casted in it. Yeah, huh. he is. He's he's that, yeah. He's one of the stars. Damn it! And I've been trying to avoid Rob Zombie's films. Um, yeah. So pretty. Really? Yeah. So pretty. God. So pretty much like everybody who's ever heard our story and stuff has pretty much given Paul the rundown. Like Paul, do not screw up your Except relationship. Except for Trevor. Trevor has not given me a nope. rundown yet. Nope. Trevor hasn't done it yet. Don't you dare think of it, Trevor. He's probably well, going to. I, I was just, I was going to tell Tessa not to screw it up. <laughs> oh, I won't screw it up. I, I won't screw it up. I won't screw it up. I, I, I know, I know what I have and, you know, I'm, you know, I'm grateful for Paul and I and our creepy yet wonderful relationship. Yeah, I agree. Paul, yeah. just remember that a gag ball only hurts for a little while. <laughs> <laughs> oh boy! Oh man! <laughs> there we go back to the gag. Do ball. we need to? Do we need the lotion too? <laughs> Put the lotion Tessa, on the skin Tessa, and catch would, the hose again. Tessa, when you when you grab hold of those anal beads, just give them a real good yank. <laughs> <laughs> don't don't be gentle. Oh goodness. <laughs> All well, right, well, listen, you, I gotta you, go. you better you better be good <laughs> in there, mister. Well, then. I got to go. I got to go pick someone up at the airport for crying out loud. I got I to gotta get going. But I, I didn't think we talked this long. This is incredible. Well, yes. you guys are more than welcome to always call us, text us, whatever. Like, I don't care. Even if we have to start doing like a weekend ritual where we just all chit chat like we're doing shoot, right now. Chit chat and shoot the all shit. It's fun and games, I think. Fair enough. I'm in. Good stuff. All right. All right, yes. guys. Well, you guys have a good evening. And like we always like to say here at the end of our interview, stay, stay scary. scary.